Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So I have a system here that I'm about to ship out to a customer. And before I did so, I thought that I would go ahead and try this brand new 10.70 update. And let's go over to settings here, and then we'll go down to system, and then system information. This one is at 10.50. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get connected up to the internet here. We'll go to network and we will go to set up an internet connection. We are going to just use the LAN cable and we'll put this on easy mode system software update. And there it is. It says that version 10.70 is now available. So let's go ahead and let's view the details while we're in here. It says that the main features of the system software update are that it includes system performance. So really, there's absolutely nothing right here that's in the notes that says what they did with this update. Okay, so let's go ahead and press circle to go back. And we are going to go down to next. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to update this. Okay, powering back up. And interesting, rebuilding database popped up on mine. I don't recall seeing that, at least with the 10.50 update. And I believe I've got a video right here on my channel that shows that one. System software update again. And now we should be on the very latest version of the software. We'll go over to system and then system information again. And there it is, 10.70. Now, there is not going to be any kind of real visual changes that you see, at least with this. It did state, you know, when we looked at the documentation, that this was just going to be for system performance. So there's probably not a lot of visual things there that we can see. Now, what I do want to do is I do want to go ahead and sign in to the PlayStation Network because I want to go ahead and try Master Core at least and see if some of the binaries that we have for things such as the light bar on the controller or the dialog elf, making sure that that still works. So let me go ahead and get signed in now. So we'll just click on the store here because that will trigger the sign in to the PlayStation Network. Okay, so let's go ahead and sign in. And we are not going to change this to our primary PS4. And we're going to go cancel here and then OK. And now it should go ahead and load in my settings. OK, so back at the main menu here, now our PlayStation looks like this gigantic ad, which is basically what happens as soon as you connect to the PlayStation Network. Let's go ahead and let's go back into the store. Okay, so I thought what we would do to start with here today is I would go ahead and download Okage Shadow King and the files that you will need to get this to work on your own PlayStation 4 are going to be just right here. So you should get the one for 10.50. The offsets are the same. I've already confirmed it. So download this package right here, which is just a zip file. And once you get those downloaded and extracted, you will just copy over this full PS4 folder to your USB drive. And then in the XFAT root, you're going to want to copy both of these also to the root of your USB drive. Now inside the games folder, you'll want to give this a name such as Metal Slug 3 or MS3, and then put the ISO image inside of it. So let's take a look at what this looks like on my USB drive right now. I have the PS4 folder on the root of my USB drive. And then inside of games, I've given it a name and then I've put an ISO image inside of it, which is just Metal Slug Anthology. This is your PS2 ISO. So if you wanted to add more games here, just create the folder and then put the ISO inside of them. And then finally, there is the ELFs. Now, this one is already included in Echo Stretch's pack, but I just copied over a dialog and a lot bar just to show you a couple of more examples in this video. You absolutely don't need those if you just want to try 
PS2 USB game loading on a 10.70 system. So let's go ahead now and let's jump back over to the PlayStation 4. Okay, so back over on the jailbroken console, what I've done is I've went ahead and I've placed my USB drive into my jailbroken console. And before we do anything with Okage here, the first thing I want to do is I want to go over to settings. And if there's any saves that I currently have in system storage, I'm just going to go ahead and delete those where we can start entirely clean. So there is one of them. We're going to go ahead and just delete that and then press OK again. And I believe that is going to be all of the save games for that game. So let's go ahead now and let's go to Apollo Save Tool. And let's go to USB Saves. And I will definitely be picking the one for 2199 because that is for the United States. The other one here is for Europe. So select whichever one is appropriate for you. And then select Copy Save Game to the Hard Disk Drive. And press X. And we do want to re-sign it. So let's go ahead and hit Yes here. And now it shows that that has been copied successfully. And so if you do want to see what account it's tied to, you can go back into your HDD saves and you can just scroll down to Okage. And then for this one, I can go to view save details. And this right here is my account ID that is tied to my PlayStation network. Now, again, if you don't know, you can adjust these by coming in here to the user tools. And then there is this activate PS4 accounts that you can make sure that yours is tied to. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and let's go back over to settings here. And we're going to go to our application save data management. And we're going to save data in system storage. And we're going to copy that to a USB storage device. And as you can see right here, it does say it is a non-installed application because I've got the Europe version on my jailbroken PS4. So now I'm going to select it. I'm going to press copy here. And now that that's copied, it's time to go ahead and boot back up our PlayStation 4 that's on 10.70. Okay, so back on our 10.70, so back at this screen right here, we're going to go save data on USB storage device, and we're going to select copy to system storage. We're going to select Okage, and we're going to select copy here. And now that is in the system. So let's go ahead and let's run Okage now, and hopefully it will work. So we'll press the start button, restore a game. Aha! Awesome. It is working. So we're not going to try the USB game loader at the moment. So I'm going to select no here. And we're going to run the dialog. So let's press yes to run the dialog. Okay. So it is working properly on a 10.70 system. It says, are you on a PS5? Well, the answer to that is no. And well, this dialog box is running code, which means it can actually verify if we're on a PS5 or not. So I'm going to select no. And it says, wow, you are so honest. Okay. And we're going to select yes right here on the light bar. So the light bar, as you can see it right now, it's this kind of blue color. We're going to select yes here. And there you go. That is working as well. So we can see this kind of turned to this kind of orange kind of color here. So very awesome. So the last thing that I'll try is, is that will it run a PS2 game? on master core with 10.70 let's go ahead and press yes on this one and it's asking do we want to play metal slug i'm going to select yes to that ha <laughs> ha there it is it is loading up metal slug anthology dot iso over usb on a 10.70 system so very cool so we'll just go ahead and create a profile here just to make sure that's all working. And now, sure, we'll turn on the auto save. So now it's going to save the data. Save is successful. So it can write to 
that part of the system. So Metal Slug Anthology here. Okay, and it's so very cool to see that right now I am currently running a 10.70 system. And well, with Master Core and at least the 10.50 offsets, everything still works. Everything is running perfectly fine. So at least with the 10.70 update that we saw out there it definitely is not affecting any of the offsets for master core so if you do see the 10.50 binaries you absolutely are still going to be in incredibly great shape and so really there you have it on a 10.70 system you are able to take advantage of master core and run your ps2 games just like you were doing all along. I think that is so very cool. So anyway, thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Michael out.